Karen was white in the last round. This game was played on Monday of last week, seven days ago. Yeah, it's a fine result, but it's just, um, it's not a very good game is all. The other games were perfect. I know, all my games are bad. But the results were okay. I wanted more. I wanted to win some of these games that I should have won. Did you put this game in the computer yet? Yeah, I did actually. You saved it? Mm hmm. Knight I, BD7. So you don't have to send it to me. Knight F3. Knight F3. E3. Bishop oh, wait, F3. Maybe I didn't do this one. Oh, I did this one while you we were still in yeah, Chicago. You changed a lot of I stuff. I did this one while we were still in Chicago. Yeah, you changed a That's lot of your moves. That's why I fixed moves. it. Yeah, I yeah. did this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was surprised, surprised the engine said I was um, winning in a couple of spots where I felt so beaten down and demoralized. So obviously I have some psychological issues because <laughs> I was winning at that point in the game. Later, I wasn't winning. Hmm. <clears throat> Bishop G7 must have been played at some point. G5. No. I can go send the, send that one. Well, let's pretend it's played. Now, what would you have played? Probably played Knight BD2 later. <clears throat> Uh, queen c2. Okay, so you played c3. <coughs> Otherwise, it would be hard to play queen c2. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, maybe I played it c4. Would be difficult. No. Um, all right. Bishop d3. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. Mm hmm. Yeah, you don't want to take that because you're trading this pawn for this pawn. This is a good pawn. Mm -hmm. So just develop your knight. Yeah, you know, almost never want to take that. Yeah, that was dumb. Yeah. Never trade. Well, I was worried I was going to somehow get forked right. on e4. And I think it's just lazy because I didn't want to keep an eye on it. But then I still was going to have to. I don't know. Yeah, his knight takes, pawn takes is bad. Now you're better. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Yay, hey, Crespo. Yay, thank you for the gift sub, frankly, terrible. For Crespo. Yeah, you have a good night. Queen B3. Castles, D two. Yeah, in this position, this is where he played the mistake, Queen D five, and you could have played Knight C four, and then you're winning. Right. I don't know why I didn't see that. That's so frustrating. It actually, wins material because his queen's attacked, mm -hmm. and if his queen moves like away from his rook, you know, you have Knight D six check or or rook takes rook and queen takes pawn check. So he has to go here, mm -hmm. then you take, then you go here attacking his queen, then knight d6 check, then the f pawn's hanging. Man, that would have been so wonderful. Yeah, also never trade. <clears throat> okay, yeah. traded. I don't know why I did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his queen's lined up with your rook, so you want to look for a discovered attack. You were like, my pawn's attacked, and you were scared. And then when you got scared, that's when people get shot. And nobody wants to get shot. And we're all going to be like little Fonzarellis here. And what's Fonzarelli? Cool. Correcto mundo. So, hang on a minute. So, if he... Go back. <clears throat> so, if knight c4... Queen takes g2, then you take. Uh -huh. If he plays king takes, you play queen takes check. If he takes this with check, you go back. <coughs> oh, that's right. Attacking his queen, then knight d6 check, queen takes b7, Papa John's. Okay, that's right, that's right. I got it. Mainly Papa <clears throat> John's. Yeah, I'm not good enough to see all that. Now, come on. 
maybe you know in the next month month or two I, I could see that I could yeah, you're always trading don't trade here you might make, make a better yeah. center now in this position you have an obvious positional move if I was a chess coach yeah this would be a position I would show my students there's only one move a grandmaster would play here. Obvious position. Yes. <clears throat> if you show Aviv this position mm -hmm. and you say, Ben said this is a good puzzle position, like what's the position for white, then he would be ecstatic. Mm -hmm. He'd be mm -hmm. like, well, of course. Isn't that what you played? And you'd say no. And he'd say, what? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't you don't seem to follow my never trade policy. Trading on D five, trading again. So, um, position. E Wizzle's the only one with the right answer. He said the answer is fries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so what does black want to do here? And what do you like about your position? Well, I like that their bishop's blocked off. Well, you do, do you? Mm -hmm. Remember in the game when the bishop wasn't blocked off because he pushed his pawns? See how these pawns are in the same color as his bishop? Yeah. And what did I say about that? Is that good for him or is that bad for him? was bad. Right. So he wants to push this pawn to e4, which he did. Mm -hmm. And to preface that, he has to play what move? How does he kick your knight out? Oh, f5. So you should play. Um, g4. Right. g4 is a really obvious positional move. Like Grandmaster in a one minute can plays g4 here. Because mm -hmm. then your knight is on e4 forever, and his bishop is bad, and you, you stop f5. And you fix this weakness on h6. It's a backward pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the engine says g4, you're plus one, because this is such a bad bishop and your knight has f5. Mm -hmm. If he can play f5, e4, then he could get the advantage. It could. Which yeah, is... I can see that now, because I knew to, I uh -huh. liked the bishop block. Though. That I'm right. more capable of seeing than that right. previous He should take with the pawn now. Tactical sequence. And then play f5, because you can't stop f5. Then he has a nice center. He said this. Now, you definitely don't want to trade rooks here because your rook is better than his rook. His rook can't do anything. His rook's just sitting there looking silly. Your rook is on this backward weak pawn. Mm -hmm. So now it's time to play g4 again. He'd give you another chance. Then if your knight got to f5, that would be quite weak. Oh, yeah. So you definitely don't want to go here because you don't want to take and straighten out his pawns anyway. So g4 again, and the engine says you're winning. Darn, it seems so obvious. <laughs> when, you when you say it. <laughs> no, but I've noticed this in your play, and you deny it. But yeah. you, you're a very reactionary player. I don't deny that. Yeah. I've, I've told you many times that I hate to be in that position where right. I'm just reacting to their attacks. Right. And and yeah. so when somebody makes a move and you react to that move, mm -hmm. then later in the game they make a move and you react to that move. You're not doing your uh, own I, thing. Right. I never, no, I hate that. You need to do your own stuff. So when you play mm -hmm. like queen takes d5, rook takes d5, rook d1, you're just reacting to them. All right, I get it. And here, if you play g4, your mm -hmm. knight is the best knight ever. Yeah. But I didn't see it. Okay, do that. he played king here. Now you want to play g4. The engine wants you to go here because the engine wants to play rook h1 and not trade the rooks. Mm -hmm. Okay, c4 is an anti positional move. You want your pawns on the same color as his bishop, and you want his pawns on the same color as his bishop. However, since you have double g pawns, and since he wants to play f5, e4, mm -hmm. you still want to play g4 because that kills his bishop. That fixes his pawns so mm -hmm. they can't move. Right. So C4 is not good because you're putting a pawn on a white square. Okay, so here, then he took. Now it should be a draw. 
And again, you want to play g4 like every move because mm -hmm. you don't want him to play f5. And then he played f5. Yeah, now you're not better anymore. b4. And then you don't want to play a4. You want your pawn on a3, so it's on dark square. That way you can control c5 forever. You got your pawn backed up by another pawn. Then okay. you can just chill. After this, the way the game went, you gave c5 away, and he had some winning chances, but you... He couldn't win because everything was so equal. King C7, I was watching when he played that. Mm. And I was like, what world am I in? I didn't understand what that was either. I mean, like E4 just screams out weird. to be played. King C7. Yeah, you definitely don't want to play B5. Yeah, in fact, here you want to play a weird move. Recommended by me. Mm -hmm. You want to play E4 because that fixes this pawn here. So then his bishop can never, he can never play E4 himself. Yeah, then he can't really do anything with his bishop. I wish your pawn was here, because then his bishop would suck more. Yeah. Okay, so b5 is bad because you give all the dark squares away. So now his king and bishop can infiltrate. And you go from equal to now the engine says he's plus one. Mm -hmm. And you still drew because of your fine defensive skill, <laughs> which paid the bills. Another thing you did... That, That's not that, really plus one. And, well, it was. It changed since I said it. The other thing that you're doing that I say not to do is you did move your king up the board. He did the opposite. His king was on d6. He went back to c7. Yeah, I don't know. Then he went back that. to d6. I don't know what that guy was doing. Also, sometimes he would stand and make a move and walk around. <clears throat> I don't know what he was doing. Okay. No, it's tough to remember everything. <laughs> All right. You got to move your king up in the I end know. game. I can't remember everything at once. A5. I'm doing the best okay. I can. And again, you got to play E4 so this pawn stays here forever. Mm -hmm. Once he plays E4, he's better because yeah. his bishop is is godlike. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His bishop could have sucked. If your knight was here and your pawn was here and his pawn was here, then you have good knight against bad bishop. Vatals. Okay, king C2, king D6. Still wants you to play E4. E4 is risky, but I guess his pawn's attacked, so he has to do something about that. Yeah. Okay, so you play king b3, king c5. Yeah, now, you, now you can't ever play e4. Now it says you're winning. You have a forced win here. King c5 is a blunder. I, yeah. Well, yeah. So notice knight e4 is mate if his pawn isn't here. Yeah. So you play here, and then you take his pawn next move for free. And then you play knight e4 check, and so forth. He can't move his f pawn because knight e4 is mate. Uh, but he could go ahead and escape. No, but you're taking a pawn for free. Then yeah. you're playing knight e4. God damn, your your game got really good all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. This says you're plus seven. Yeah. Yeah, g4 just wins. Yeah, I didn't see it. You could have played g4 mm -hmm. if, if if only you were married to Matt Larson. Sorry, you're married to me. <laughs> if you're married to Matt Larson, you played g4 every move. Then you would have won. <laughs> The funny thing is he says he doesn't play G4 anymore. Yeah. Man, G4 is really good. It wins the game. Then mate. And then even worse than getting mate, it is letting you play pawn takes a knight E4 check. Man, that's worse than mate. God damn. That's crushing. <clears throat> yeah, you're plus seven here and you're just winning a pawn, but you're getting E4 for your knight. You're getting a passed pawn. Mm -hmm. Pawn's on both sides of the board. His bishop is bad. Okay. Yeah, usually when you play low-rated players, you have a lot of chances to win because that's that's how they do it. Okay, knight e2. He played e4, which but is... He, yeah, but I mean, he was higher rated than me. Yeah, but he's a low-rated player. Uh -huh. He's not, you know, uh, name somebody you good at. Carlson? Carlson's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> no, he doesn't, you know, know a lot of stuff. Either. Okay, now, even though you're married to me, mm -hmm. you played f3. Okay, now it says you can resign. Wow. Yeah, now you're losing because he has a funny way to win here. He can make a past H pawn. And you don't want him to make a past H pawn because you have a knight. The worst pawn for the knight is the side pawns because the knights have to go all the way over to the side to stop them. Right. So now it says he's plus seven. Mm -hmm. It says trade here, trade here, and then play H5 with unstoppable H4. Oh, yeah. Yeah, then your knight's going to go here. Blah. Yeah. 
Yeah, this says you're completely lost. The, the, like, I would think black is plus one here, or plus two. It says it's plus eight. Because mm. it says, like, man, that's a good pawn. Terrible. Okay, and also your king can never do anything because then he <clears> takes <throat> all this. Right. Your king actually can't move. If you go here, he plays king of c4. Mm -hmm. This is illegal. So you can't move your king, your pawns, your knight has to stay here and babysit his h pawn. So that's not good. Okay, so f3 was the losing move. If I had a nickel for every time I said that. Okay, also you don't want to play f3 because your pawns are on dark squares where you want to, you want to have them on dark squares. So his bishop can't do anything. If they're on white squares, then his bishop is better. But the reason f3 is bad is just because he takes and he gets a passed h pawn. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. Okay, so f3 is the losing move, and you still didn't lose. He played bishop e5, then you corrected f3 with f4. Now you're talking. Now you got them all on dark squares, so his bishop can't do anything. Right. The stuff his bishop could do later, he barely couldn't do enough. Mm -hmm. You were like, I defend this, I defend this, and then he couldn't do anything. Okay, so now the game is a draw again. I think it was a draw the rest of the game. I don't, yeah. I think the rest of the game is a draw. Like nobody did anything wrong. Well, I offered a draw because it seemed like a draw. And I was mm -hmm. tired and he ignored me. It doesn't like your position after knight here. It says takes, takes, king e6, mm -hmm. g4, bishop c5. Yeah, here's what it wants him to do. It wants him to do what he did, well, the way he played, mm -hmm. except play g4. So in the game, like his bishop was here and your knight was defending this. So if he plays g4 and bishop c5 and your knight is babysitting this, then he can run over here, play h4, king here, g3, and he can he can come in here, I guess. Although I don't see how. Oh, yeah, just h4. No, but h4. I actually don't see how you come in. It says you're completely lost here, but I don't see how. So let me see why you're completely lost. I'm going to play like the engine. Why are you lost? G4. Why is this lost? Bishop C5. Yeah. Oh, I, oh, 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 oh. You're lost because this pawn exists. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's going to go bishop here, bishop here. Oh. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, and then the king can get into. Yeah, that's bad. Okay, takes that on h4. But okay, so I can't play king c3. Okay, fine. Let's play here. Yeah, it just says you're getting zugzwanged. You can't move your knight because bishop e1 wins. You can't play knight here because bishop d2 wins. So you have two weaknesses here. And you can't move your king because king c4 wins. Mm -hmm. Somehow in the game, he traded here, and then this... Oh, yeah. If he trades here, you don't have a weak g-pawn. He traded on f4 in the game. Right, yeah. Then that pawn wasn't weak because you didn't have it. Right. Yeah. Now you have to defend both of them, and you have to stop king c4. So you're, just, you're in zugzwang. If you play knight here, he plays bishop here. If you play knight here, he plays bishop here. If you move your king, he goes here. So this says plus 7 for black. Mm -hmm. Now, that means you made a mistake, because you're equal here. Yeah, it wants you to get counterplay here. So you were just doing nothing, and eventually that led to a draw. But it wants you to do something. It wants you to take this and play knight here and put your knight here. That's a good square for your knight. Because you see his <laughs> f-pawn is indefensible. Yeah. So it wants him to trade there, and this is a drawn king and pawn ending, because he has a protected passed pawn, and so do you when you play here. Right. So then you just chill mm -hmm. until the next episode. Next episode. Right. <laughs> so this is a draw. If he doesn't do that, you're going to go take his f pawn, and maybe you'll win. Okay, so the ID one's losing now, and he didn't win, as we know. He played g4. Now it says it's a draw. Knight here. Oh, yeah. The reason it's a draw is if he plays the same way, you're going to take with the knight and then play knight d4. Mm -hmm. And then, well, then you might win. It's a draw if he takes your knight and goes to the king and pawn ending. If he doesn't, then you'll win. Then he played h4. 
making sure he could never win. If he doesn't play h4 and you don't take on c6, eventually he might win. But after h4, he trades off your g-pawn. Now he can't win. He got rid of one of your weaknesses, your g3 pawn, mm -hmm. where his bishop can try to come in through the back door. Now you're better because you can take this and you can activate your knight and try to win this guy. The engine says white's better. It wants you to take, king takes, knight e2. Yeah, look at this. Look what you could have done. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you're threatening here, you agree. Normally, black would play bishop f6, because otherwise you play knight e4 and take on f5. But you have knight g3. So, got to watch it. Now you're winning, it says plus 5. Mm -hmm. So after, after his h4 <laughs> mistake, bishop takes h4. Now you have good winning chances by taking. Darn. I thought okay. about taking You it. played knight d1. Yeah, now it's a draw again. He played bishop e1. You played knight c3. Bishop d2, knight d1. Yeah, if your pawn was here and his pawn was here, like it was earlier, then bishop here, then you lose your pawn, then he queens. Mm -hmm. But yeah, when he trades these two pawns off, then you can't lose anymore. Could win. King c2. Bishop e1, king b3. This is why we tell children not to play instantly in the end game. Mm -hmm. And then they look at us and nod and they play instantly in the end game. You got to play slow in the ending and never move. And then you choke on your rage. If you're not choking on your rage, you're not trying. King f2, probably bishop f2. King c3, bishop f2. King b3, knight c3, round and round she goes. <laughs> it's the same deviled egg. Hey, bird. You're going to be in Vegas? Draw angered. <clears throat> Promote. I hope I feel better, man. This is not good. Now, let's take an aside here. You may have noticed that several times I critiqued the moves by the players. That's because we're analyzing the game. That's what happens. And when better players play, like Norway chess players, the same thing happens, except they critique their moves even more. Their blunders aren't as bad. Their mistakes aren't as bad, but they're still bad. There's still, you know, you like you got Rajabov MVL. I'm sorry, not Rajabov. Who was it? It was somebody MVL. Give me a second. <clears throat> it might have been Rajabov. Who did MVL play today? Oh, Wang Hao. Okay, Wang Hao MVL, they played the Armageddon game, and, and MVL won in 32 moves with black. So that means his opponent must have done something wrong. He didn't make a one-move blunder, although he did at the end, but he like kept getting outplayed. So he has to analyze his game and see all the mistakes that he made where he's worse with white the whole time. And if you analyze your games with an engine and with a better player several times like you're supposed to do, like you know, what Archer does, then you see a lot of mistakes. Then you try not to make those mistakes again. If you don't see a lot of mistakes, you're not analyzing the game properly you're doing a cursory analysis and you're trying to make yourself feel better. I won, I'm the best. <clears throat> terrible. If you think the game was terrible, then you did a good analysis. Mm -hmm. Because if the game wasn't terrible, why aren't you playing like Stockfish and drawing? Why is Stockfish spotting me a piece and barely losing the match? Or Komodo. And then when Komodo lost the match, the Komodo guy's like, I can't believe you beat Komodo. The next one will beat you. He was trash talking after the match. The next version of Komodo will spot you a piece and beat you. Because that's because humans don't play as well because we don't see 30 moves ahead every move. If you saw 30 moves ahead every move, you'd play better. Mm -hmm. I just worry that I'm not going to be well enough to play. But you like flying so much. <laughs> well, I don't have to play until Wednesday. Mm-hmm. So I'm playing in the women's and the main event. So I have a whole bunch of chess games I have to play. There's a lot of people playing in the women's and main event, but that's only in poker. <laughs> You're doing it in chess. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we have to travel tomorrow, Bird. I have to pack tonight. We're traveling tomorrow. And then I can rest for like the next 24 hours after that, I guess, until I play. Yeah, you only see 29 moves ahead. Yeah. It'll be fun. (laughs) Yeah, when you analyze your games, you realize every move is a mistake by both sides. But you have to figure out why. Like, when you look at moves that the engine says are correct and you didn't play them, you have to figure out, did you look at them? Would they have never occurred to you? And try to learn from that, and then you get better. And then if you were AI, then you could play sports, like basketball. Let's see if Karen knows who AI is in basketball. Uh, no. Allen Iverson. You heard of him? Yeah, I've heard of him. He's your favorite player. Mm -hmm. And what does he not want to talk about? Um... Practice. Talking about practice. Talking about practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to talk about that. Yeah, see, Bonarici said practice. 